What's going on? Welcome to Bayou Bengals football. So, getting closer now. We are we're at Wednesday, so get closer and closer uh, to game time to kick off. Uh, Florida State LSU um, going to be an exciting matchup. And uh, you know, I was talking I was talking with my dad last night. Like these these are the games college football is just craving. Like as college football fans, these are the games you want. Like you have to. You need more of these games. You know, there's just there was a weekend last year where it's just like there was some scores where it's just like there's some games where I think it was like the noon. It's either just the noon games or the noon and three thirty games. Every game was decided by twenty one points or more. Like people cannot people can't watch this stuff anymore. Like it's just gotten it's gotten ridiculous. Like you need must watch football games, and that's what that's what this has the makings to be a must watch football game. So yeah, looking forward. Looking forward to this matchup. Um, no Mason Smith for LSU. Um, appears Florida State's been fully healthy. That's something Mike Norvell talked about, that he's happy that his team is uh, is fully healthy. So, um, you know, that's a, a big boost for the, the Florida State Seminoles. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be, gonna be a, um, you know, I saw someone put this is going to be a heavyweight fight. I think it certainly could. I think this is going to be similar to... Um, similar to an NFL game in the sense that, you know, you have great play in the trenches. Uh, you have just, you know, NFL level athletes on defense, NFL caliber receivers, um, you know, in a mix of speedy receivers and big physical receivers. You know, this is, you know, I hope this is one of those games where you look back on, I've kind of touched about this before. Hopefully this is one of those games you look back on and you go, you know, that was like, like at the end of this year, that was you look back at that game and you go that that game was was absolutely awesome that game was just you know exactly what i needed uh, that game was exactly you know, lived up to the hype uh was remembered as one of the top college football games so yeah hopefully hopefully it, it lives up to the hype and it is a, a great uh football game uh, for four quarters uh, but yeah um, so for lsu you know, LSU wide receiving core is certainly very strong. Malik Neighbors, uh, one of the top wide receivers in the country. He's going to need to have a, a really big game in this matchup. Um, for Florida State, you know, Florida State, Keon Coleman, they're going to really count to have a big game. Uh, Florida State, uh, Destin Hill, he's a, he's a guy who, you know, is getting a lot of praise, getting that start in the slot. He's you know, certainly has a chance to have a breakout, a really oppor great opportunity for him to break out in this game. So uh, keep an eye on Destin Hill. Um, but yeah, I mean, talent at wide receiver, um, you know, quarterback play, you know, the quarterback play should be pretty good in this game at the very least. You know, you feel like, uh, you know, th maybe this could be, you know, last year this was one of Jordan Travis's best games. Um, Hopefully this year this is one of Jaden Daniels' best games. Um, so that's exactly, you know, that's exactly what you need to have a, a really, you know, if this game's going to live up to the hype, you need quarterback play uh, that's outstanding on both sides of the ball. Jaden Daniels and uh, Jordan Travis both getting it done on opposite ends is is going to be is going to be absolutely crucial uh, to this being a close back and forth game, kind of like a lot of people are calling for. But uh, yeah, it's and it's another. It's going to be one of those games. I feel like Jaden Daniels, Jordan Travis, they're both going to have to make some key runs. Uh, you know, that's what you kind of. I always kind of get that picture in my head in a close game. You know, the quarterback is going to have to, you know, scramble and make some, make a couple highlight. You know, the team's going to win, whether it's Jaden Daniels and LSU or Jordan Travis and Florida State. The team that's going to win is going to have to make a couple of key scramble highlight throws on the run and uh yeah i think that's you know that's going to be exciting just to see number one which quarterback and team does that and then number two uh, can they do that um you know bolts can they do that you know multiple times you know, you know that's most it's most likely going to take multiple uh, times doing that but uh yeah so Jaden daniels jordan travis certainly the quarterback's going to be key uh in this football game but yeah, I think uh, you know Jaden Daniels. Everyone, uh, that is kind of the you know it's not as hot a topic right now because I think more people 
uh, don't want to talk about it and more so want to see it. Uh, but it was the hottest topic is how much, you know, has Jaden Daniels improved and how much. So that continues to remain uh, one of the biggest questions. And it's an answer that, you know, we may not get against Florida State because if LSU, I guess the point, the point I made of why this could be a blowout, if LSU is really that good, then, you know, they could win this game, maybe not in a blowout fashion, but handily. Um, by Jaden Daniels just playing okay. Because, you know, I think that um, LSU, you know, as much hype as they're getting because they got difference makers, uh, guys like Will Campbell, Harold Perkins, you know, uh, if those guys have the, the game or have a game that they, they, they certainly could have and then you have um, the defense or then you have um, – you know, Daniels play well enough, not turn the ball over. That is the case for LSU to, to win this game handily. And, uh, but yeah, we kind of outlined the case for Florida State yesterday. I mean, if their defensive line is as good as we think we, if it is as good as we think it could be. And like I outlined yesterday, it has the chance, it has the chance to be elite. Like we don't know, like Braden Fisk is a good player. He's, already established that i don't think that's even really debatable he's a good player he's a guy that's got an nfl future uh but to say he's he's going to be to say Braden fisk is going to be an elite player i think at this point based on evans is a stretch but can he be very good certainly can um fabian love it be very good certainly he just he just needs to stay healthy and Braden fisk just needs to show that you know the step up from western michigan uh to florida state is not uh, too big of a leap that he can still uh, continue to be fairly dominant. Uh, actually, not even. I would say he was dominant at Western Michigan. It's just you know that little step up. Uh, it's not a, it's not a, as big a step up I think as most would think, but it's enough step up where you know he could still be he could still be very good. But it just certainly does raise the question: Can he be? Can he be very good? And um, at Florida State. You know, Florida State, they expect, you know, with him going to be the starter, they expect him to have, have a really good season and kind of be that guy, you know, him and Lovett in the interior. You know, if those two, if him and Lovett are both very good this year, I think that that is just um, going to help Jared Verse even more because Jared Verse uh, is a guy that's so dominant in his own right. So you adding adding those two guys is absolutely crucial. Or adding having those two guys have success is absolutely crucial. Um so, but, uh, yeah, to me, you know, Florida State secondary, uh, you know, I think that's them versus the LSU receivers, I think, is a matchup I haven't talked about too much. But I would say, I would say my immediate reaction is LSU has the edge. But I don't think that, to me, I just have a hard time picturing LSU wide receivers dominating the Florida State defensive backs just because guys like Renardo Green, Fentrell Cypress, these are guys who, you know, Cypress, even though he's not a, maybe not a necessarily a true shutdown guy, he's a, he's a good player. Uh, and, and Green, necessarily, not necessarily a shutdown guy, more of a, you know, hard hitter tackler, kind of savvy, uh, play zone coverage, come down and hit you. Uh, I think it was him that had a big hit on Jane Daniels. Even though those guys, you know, don't necessarily scare you, I think they're good enough where they just are not good enough in discipline and well coached enough. That they're not they are not gonna completely shut down the FSU wide receiving core. So I think Florida State secondary will be good in will be um, you know pretty solid in this game. I don't think they will be elite in this game, but I think they'll be um, they'll be stout enough where LSU wide receiving core is not gonna take uh, is not just going to light them up. Now, do I think, I'll say this, do I think LSU receivers could? Yes, but also I have enough evidence to believe that they won't. So the LSU wide receivers, I'll give a slight edge over the Florida State cornerbacks, but I think the Florida State corners and their safeties hold up in this game. Um, you know, Akeem Dent, Green, these are guys with the experience in the secondary. Um, you know, you know, Florida State, you know, when you go – when you go beyond the, the the front line, the defensive line, it's kind of you still have experience, but it kind of t there's a dip to each level. I feel like the linebackers take a little step back, even though 
Bethune and uh, Deloach are experienced guys. They're not really, they're kind of like, you know, the Florida State linebackers are similar to their secondary. They're not necessarily, it's a bunch of guys that don't, they're good solid players, but they don't necessarily scare you. So, you know, linebackers, I would say and then uh, a little lesser, and then the defensive backs a little lesser. But yeah, Florida State, you know, that's why I'm not really worried if I'm a Florida State fan because, you know, if you're going to win this, like, if their defensive line isn't holding up, the game's probably over. But if their defensive line's holding up, Florida State, you got to believe Florida State has a, you know, not just a good chance, they probably will win this game because it goes back to, it goes back to the thinking of, you know, Florida State with returning guys from last year, if you can start dominating early, if you can hold up in the line of scrimmage or at least be even, then that confident that there's immediate confidence that you're going to hold up and that you um, are going to be at least, you know, in this game late in the fourth quarter. So to me, that boost of confidence by playing well early is going to be absolutely critical uh, for Florida State. But yeah, Fabian. I know we. I know we've really harped on the defensive line, but Fabian Lovett's going to be an interesting guy in this game. Fabian Lovett. If you look at him, he has the chance to be one of the top defensive tackles for next year's draft. This guy that just needs to stay on the field. Was injured, played just four games last year. But when I watch his tape, he's strong in the point of attack. Um, good against the run. Um, he's got better quickness you know he's fairly quick off the ball got just pretty good all-around quickness and agility uh for a guy that big so i'm a fan of fabian lovett's game i think he's going to be you know jared verse is going to get all the talk in this game they're going to do brian kelly even addressed that they're going to do special uh things to accommodate jared versus presence but also they're going to you know they also need to um I don't want to say hope. They also need to be aware of of guy like Fabian Lovett. So to me, if you're going to do all these special treatment, you know, I already talked about Florida State winning this game because their defensive line is dominant. But if they're going to do all this special treatment for Jared Verse, I think that goes to show that Lovett or Fiss stepping up and having the their, one of their best games in their college career, I think that is exactly what Florida State will need uh, to win this game. But even if they don't, even if one of them doesn't have their best game, if they both are just good in this game, I think that, that'll go a long way. But yeah, and then Trey Benson versus the LSU linebackers, LSU front, that is going to be a great matchup. Uh, Makai Wingo was complimentary of uh, Trey Benson. They are a heavy gap uh, run team. So, yeah, that's... Um, you know, LSU is prepared for that. They understand Benson's a, a big physical uh, running back at 220 pounds. So, you know, tackling is going to be crucial. You know, with the practice restrictions, teams just don't do as much tackling. Now, Omar Spates, Perkins, uh, Brooks, these are all guys that do a good job of wrapping up and tackling. They have, they're they going to have to really wrap up uh, like their life depended on it against Trey Benson because even as talented – is uh, the LSU defense has as talented the players as they have? You know Trey Benson. Um, Trey Benson is a guy that can consistently make the first guy miss. He does. He's got a pop. He's just he's all around strong skill set. He's going to want to run through people. So can the first guy get him down? Um, is the is the number one question? And uh, you know, and if they can't consistently in this game the first guy consistently can't bring him down how many yards after contact does he get uh, that is the you know the main question in this football game um, but yeah um, other things I wanted to talk about yeah Johnny Wilson I guess um, so we kind of touched on the Florida State receivers versus the LSU defense I guess with Johnny Wilson how much you know how how much is his height a problem in this game you know, Johnny Wilson, to me, um, you know, he is a definitely a guy that can go up and get it um, at 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, but to me, you know, how many, I guess how many red zone opportunities is Florida State going to have? And that's the number one question. But you feel like, I'll say that in this game, if Florida State is sustaining long drives, I think that is another key for them to win this game because 
Not only that, that's going to be deflating for an LSU defense that already has stressed creating turnovers, getting off the field on third down, and preventing long drives. So if Florida State's on the field for a long time and getting in the red zone, that is going to put a lot of pressure on LSU because LSU, you know, they do not want to defend Florida State in the red zone because, number one, Trey Benson's a physical back who can finish at the goal line, and then with two tall receivers – that love to go up and win 50-50 balls and Coleman and Johnny Wilson, that's going to put a lot of pressure on the LSU defense. And I think, I know this, we talk LSU here, but I think that's going to be key for Florida State to have a successful season this year is, you know, Benson, Travis, their athleticism, We got, they have a good enough offensive line. Uh, they've shown they can establish a rhythm. That's Since they can do that, they can do that well enough throughout the course of a season you know and move the ball and get in the red zone you know because getting it is that is that almost what's what's the kind of the best way to describe is that almost like a uh, for their for their for them is that almost like the uh, you know the rich the rich getting richer um, is that is that like an added bonus is there that does that uh, you know amplify you know, Coleman and Johnny Wilson's height threat even more if they're sustaining long drives because they can just, you know, throw it, you know, they'll get more opportunities to throw it up into the red zone. So I guess is that kind of a domino effect uh, for their offense. So Florida, I think LSU, one of the more underrated things is do not, do not let them get some long drives. I would hope for, if I was LSU, I would go in with the mindset, we got to force one turnover and we're going to prevent long drives. I would focus on those two things for the LSU defense and tackle. We got to tackle. If we can tackle, prevent long drives, and uh, force one turnover, just one turnover. You know, obviously more, more than one turnover is great, but if you can do those two things, tackle, prevent long drives, and force turnover, and force a turnover. Those three things, if you can do those three things well, you got to believe that was going to put LSU in a position to not only uh, for this to be a close game, but uh, to also win this game. But yeah, I love I love that someone called it a heavyweight matchup, you know, because to me, it's just like there's too many games in college football where you think they could be close, but you also know that you're almost just like you're almost like rooting so too hard for the other team just because to like try to almost will them in the game because you know they're kind of overmatched if that makes sense like i feel like in this game you know even though i've been criticized for for making the case for lsu to blow out florida state i feel like i'm not if florida state it does fall behind i feel like you're i'm not gonna you feel like you don't really have to try to you know root harder and tr you know do things to to try to will them back into the game like even if it's primarily more florida state fans you feel like they're not gonna have to just root and scream and hope to try to get them back in this game. I think with the experience this team has and enough playmakers they have, they can come back in this game. Uh, they'll be able to, to come back in this game just fine. But, yeah, I would love to see, you know, I've touched on this before, I would love to see a back and forth game. The line currently sitting at LSU minus two and a half. And what that tells me is, you know, that, that really tells me that people are 50-50 on this game. You know, last year last year was interesting because I guess not that anyone cares, um, but I'll, I'll kind of share it anyways because this kind of goes uh, with the, the preview of this game. Last year I bet Florida State, and I forget what the line was last year. I think it was LSU minus four, four and a half. I don't remember exactly. If one of you guys knows exactly, uh, you can comment it down below. It's not a big deal. I was just curious. But to me, I bet Florida State, and it was because I was too confident with LSU. And so sometimes in gambling, when you're too confident one way, you want to bet the opposite. So I bet Florida State, and I saw, you know, this year, you know, this year I'm going to bet LSU to win. Um, and I'm fairly confident. But also, you know, Vegas, Vegas is good for a reason, and the, the betting lines are set um, for a reason. And at, with it staying at, you know, minus two and a half, you know, it just goes to show that it is kind of, um, you know, I think it shows that Vegas and a lot of people think LSU, there's enough people betting on LSU and enough people thinking LSU can win that LSU, everyone believes, is the slightly 
better team if you look on paper talent wise even without mason smith but also there's a lot of people that understand there's a lot of people betting on florida state just because they understand the potency this offense could have and the potential uh that the defense of why i could play with and that the chance that it all could come together in this game um, and, and, and equate to a, a florida state uh, victory so you know just a lot of factors in play here um kind of kind of uh with with it with the with the spread but i think to me i think two and a half probably is perfect i think that's probably where it's gonna stay you know it could drop to minus two you could drop to lsu minus two um but actually i think i think if anything it might go i think it might go a little higher i think it might go to three maybe three and a half just because i think there'll be a little bit more people betting on lsu during the during game time um, i think mason smith being out i think that that boosted florida state a little bit more uh, but yeah it'll be interesting to follow that line if it moves uh, it was at minus three i forget exactly how long ago it was at minus three but yeah it'll be interesting to see if it moves to minus two uh, or if it moves to uh minus three as we get closer to game time and kickoff but yeah exciting matchup uh sunday uh, on ABC, yeah, I thought I was listening to Makai Wingo's press conference, and I was kind of confused when he said uh, matchup Sunday. I was thinking he's talking about the NFL, but no, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> we have we have college football Sunday, just like uh, just like last year. So you got Duke, Clemson Monday. So yeah, college football, college football is bad, guys. It's uh, it's exciting. Um, yeah, Friday, Saturday, we got college football Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and the NFL will follow next week. So, yeah, football in full gear. Uh, starting to feel like fall out here up in the Midwest. It's a nice, nice 75, 76 degree day. Uh, so, yeah, fall fall weather is on the way. Uh, beautiful day, beautiful day today. Uh, it's nice to see the weather get a little cooler. You know, fall weather a lot of times is awesome. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a big game. Highly tested, you know, highly uh, anticipated matchup in Orlando, Florida. Last year, the game. What was the game last year? I think it was in New Orleans, wasn't it? So, yeah, the game a little closer uh, to Florida State Stadium this year. We'll see how the fans travel. I assume there's going to be a lot of LSU fans uh, in a lot of LSU fans this year, but I think there'll be a lot of uh, uh, Florida State fans as well, since the game is going to take place in Florida. Uh, so, yeah, looking forward, looking forward to it for sure so yeah we'll go just talk a couple minutes a couple more minutes here um, but yeah the running i mean lsu running back position um it's just gonna be I, i'm interested to see you know you got to believe it's gonna be josh williams that starts the game but does goodwin play uh in this or does goodwin play in this football game he's been ruled doubtful a couple days ago we talked about that um how much does a guy like um how much does Logan Diggs get in the game? I know a lot of he's a highly anticipated transfer. How much does he play in this football game? Uh, he's got a really he's got a good skill set, uh, a talented guy who really uh, did some nice things at Notre Dame. Andre Sam, do we see him at all? Uh, you know who is the starting secondary for this game? It appears it's going to be uh, Sage Ryan, Zay Alexander, Deuce Chestnut. Uh, you know Stamp, do we see Stamps? Do we see Andre Sam? Do we see, uh, you know, Greg Brooks should sp start at, at free since he's announced the captain and Brooks is the guy that started last year, a uh, really good all-around player. And do we see Major Burns at all? Or, or does Major Burns get the start at strong? Uh, but, yeah, Andre Sam, you know, he could be one of the underrated stars uh, of this game. You know, Andre Sam not projected to start. Uh, Major Burns projected to get the nod, but don't count out Andre Sam. He's a super talented, uh, hard-hitting, uh, you know, guy that can be all around the football, a guy that can blitz, just a, a definitely an impact player uh, for uh, for LSU. So keep an eye on Andre Sam and, uh, you know, LSU uh, moving closer to game day here now on Wednesday. We're just a, just a few, gay, few days away uh, from kickoff in Orlando. For the highly contested matchup 
of uh, LSU and, uh, and Florida State. So I'm going to wrap with that. Thanks for tuning in to Bayou Bengals football. Make sure to stay tuned for more episodes and clips from the show.